Our next speaker is Nancy Lane, who uh, spoke yesterday, so I'm not going to go through back through her bio. And Nancy uh, is going to discuss glucoid, corticoid-induced osteoporosis, a translational science journey. This morning, um, I'm going to do something quite opposite of the first speaker. We're actually going to jump a bit from the patient to the laboratory, look at a few cells, a few gene arrays, and then go back to the patient and hopefully um, have a little fun along the way. So for this particular talk, I have nothing to disclose. Now, as mentioned yesterday, prednisone is poison. And uh, it poisons many, um, many organs. Um, this is a list of, um, of adverse events related to patients on glucocorticoids that Ken Sag put together years ago. You'll all find fracture obvious, cataracts, infections, GI bleeds and ulcers, atherosclerosis, um, glaucoma. But, and we've probably all seen some aspects of this in our practices, but there's something that all, not only does this happen with glucocorticoids, but there's also, these are also our diseases associated with aging. So at some level, I want you to remember as we talk today that um, glucocorticoids not only are anti-inflammatory and immune modulating, but they also rapidly age the tissue and especially related to bone. Okay. So um, epidemiologically, how common is glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis? It's the most common secondary cause of osteoporosis. What's important to know is it can occur at any age, both sexes and across all ethnic groups. And although I didn't believe the statistic that 30 to 50 percent on patients will sustain an osteoporotic fracture, as I have uh, matured in the field and treated these patients, this statistic is truly what I see. And while we use steroids for our patients, they're used across a number of subspecialties, so many of patients are actually exposed to them. However, glucocorticoid-induced osteoporosis has some features that are similar to postmenopausal osteoporosis, but many features that are truly different. And to start with, the glucocorticoid fracture often is different. If you look at your anterior wedge fracture here, that is seen um, in this lateral spine x-ray. This is what you often see with a glucocorticoid treated fracture. You see something happens in the middle of the vertebrae and um, my pointer doesn't work anymore. Um, perfect, thank you. All right, <laughs> there's a collapse in the middle, so clearly something is slightly different. And another feature, glucocorticoid induced osteoporosis, which is differs from postmenopausal is from this study done many years ago in the Netherlands where rheumatoid arthritis patients treated with 10 milligrams a day of prednisone for six months and then it was stopped. And by QCT you can see that these patients lost about 8% of their trabecular bone density measured by QCT. But when they stopped the prednisone, there was something that occurred. There was recovery of bone. This also doesn't happen in postmenopausal osteoporosis. And the important clinical aspect <laughs> and why screening for these patients and when to do another BMD is off the table at this point is this is an interesting study done by Van Stat where he looked at patients who, postmenopausal women that were in a placebo treated RCT and glucocorticoid treated patients in a placebo arm of an RCT and found that patients on glucocorticoids fracture at higher BMDs than postmenopausal women. And if you look here at the femoral neck, they, some of these patients fractured with BMDs at minus one. So clearly something is happening with the quality of the bone that's quite different. And surprisingly, somebody else noticed this a long time ago. <laughs> and Harvey Cushing was doing autopsies in um, patients with Cushing syndrome with too much um, glucocorticoid and made note that the greatly compressed bodies of the vertebrae were so soft they could be cut with a knife. So something happened to this bone in patients with